Hey everyone, welcome back to trigonometry. This is going to be lecture four of the course. And <clears throat> in this section, we're going to extend our definition of the trigonometric functions to include uh, functions, uh, trigonometric values of trigonometric functions for any angle. So previously, we had restricted our definition to just those uh, angles that are acute. And now we'll extend beyond that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the way we want to do this is we're going to kind of reconfigure the way we think about uh, the trig functions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move into the xy coordinate system. Okay, and we're going to kind of construct what the, what the trig functions mean in that space. And so this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And let's say that the initial side of my angle is on the x-axis, meaning that the angle is in standard position. Okay, so the vertex is at the origin and my initial side is on the x-axis. And let's say that my angle sweeps out like this. Okay, and so this will be my angle theta. Okay, and so here, just to make sure we're clear, this is the initial side here. And then I've got my terminal side up here. Okay. And let's put uh, a point on my terminal side here. So let's denote some point. And remember, we're in the xy coordinate system, so I'm going to denote this as a, b, uh, the a being the x coordinate and the b being the y coordinate. OK. And so given this kind of a setup, you can see this, this, is, this uh, sort of setup will hold for any value of theta that we can imagine, right? So if I have a theta equals 270 degrees, then my terminal side is just down here and my AB is somewhere on the negative Y axis. If my theta is between 270 and 360 degrees, then my terminal side is somewhere down here and my uh, AB would be somewhere in the fourth quadrant down here. Okay, so this, this construction will work for any theta. Okay, and so then given this construction, Here's how we want to define the trig function. So we're going to let theta be any angle in standard position. Any angle in standard position. Okay. And as I just explained, we're going to let AB be, denote the coordinates. Denote the coordinates of any point on the terminal side of theta. On the terminal side of theta. Okay. <clears throat> now, if r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared if that value is the distance between AB and the origin, 0, 0, okay, then the trig functions go like this. So sine of theta is equal to B over R. Cosine of theta is A over R. And the tangent of theta is b over a. Okay, so those are the three main functions, and then all of the reciprocal identity functions are the inverses, so or the reciprocals. Cosecant of theta is r over b, secant of theta is r over a, and the cotangent of theta is a over b. Okay. And so this is the definition of the trig functions in the context of any angle. So we're no longer thinking about trigonometry just from the standpoint of right triangles. Now we're thinking about trigonometry in, from, the, from the context of any angle that you can form in the plane, which is basically any angle. 
Okay. All right. Um, so let's break this down a little bit and make sure we understand exactly where this is coming from. Okay, so let's break this down a little further here. Right, so let's redraw our picture. All right, so you've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis, and over here you've got your terminal side with the point B, or sorry, with the point, the point A comma B on it. Okay. And the angle, of course, is G. The angle is theta, like this, right? So our angle is in standard position, and we've got our initial side and our terminal side. And on our terminal side, we have denoted a point A B. Okay. And so what's important to notice here is that when I have an angle like this, I can form a right triangle by just kind of dropping a perpendicular from A B onto the x axis. Right, and so the implication here is that this is the length A and this is the length B. Okay, right, because A is the x coordinate, denotes the distance from the origin on the x axis, and so that would be this length A. B is the y coordinate, so it denotes the distance from the origin on the y axis, and so that would be, of course, B. Okay, and so this implies a triangle. And so you've got your A, you've got your B, and you've got your R. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to pretend that this is theta for a moment, and we'll get to a theorem a little later that makes this work perfectly. But just pretend that this is the angle of interest here, even though technically I did draw the angle being kind of the other part of the triangle. But let's just think about it like this for a second. So if this is theta, then we know that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite over the hypotenuse, which in this case is B over R. And we know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is A over R. Okay. And then the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that would be B over A. Okay. Right. And you'll notice that B over R, A over R, B over A is the same as what we derive above. Right. And so you can really think of this version of the trig, trig function definition as really just generalizing the idea of the right triangle in the plane. Right? So if this is my theta, then the triangle that's implied is formed by dropping a perpendicular onto the x-axis. I could do the same thing for um, any angle. Right? So let's say instead that my theta looks like this. Okay, so that's my theta. Right? So here's my x-axis, my y-axis. Right, and so in this case, I can take the perpendicular and kind of come up like this, and I've got a right triangle. Right, so if AB is on th in this quadrant, then you know A is still the distance on the x-axis, so that's still this length here, and B is the distance on the y-axis, and so that's that length there, and so my triangle would look something like this. Right, so here's the theta of interest. There's the right angle. There's A, there's B, and then there's the hypotenuse, which we've been calling R. Okay. Now, what is this R? Okay, so well, so you can see that you can do this right triangle business pretty much anywhere, right? And so try some other quadrants, come up with some really goofy angles, and see how the right triangle can be defined uh, for your given angle. But what is this R? Well, in the definition, it says that R is equal to, it says, if R equals A squared plus B squared, square root of that, is the distance from AB to 0, 0, 
then dot 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 right so so r is the distance from the point on the terminal side to the origin okay and so let me put my my r my point out here a little bit further right because technically i drew it right like that so this r is the distance so you may remember your distance formula so if I have two points, x1, y1, and another point we'll put over here, x2, y2. So if I have two points, the distance between them, we'll call it d, is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 and these are squared quantities All right so this is the distance formula All right this is the famous distance formula from algebra All right so you'll probably have seen this um, I would guess you've seen this and so what it, what this r equals a squared plus b squared is doing is just using this distance formula. So here, so in in the case of trig, your x1, y1 is maybe the a, b, and your x2, y2 is the origin, 0, 0. Right, so here the distance would be equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, take the square root of that, and you get what? 0 minus negative a, 0 minus a, ah, sorry, 0 minus a squared plus 0 minus b squared. Okay, and so what do you get? You just get negative a squared plus negative b squared. And we know that that's the same thing. When you square the negative, it's the same thing as the positive. So it's just a squared plus b squared, isn't it? All right, and so that's all r is. It's the distance between the origin, 0, 0, and any arbitrary point in the plane, a, b. Okay, so that's what's happening with the r. Okay. Very good. Now, another way to think about this is, you know, if I've got my triangle, and this is theta, and this is a right angle, and this is A, and this is B, R is just going to be, you know, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to get derived the same formula. So here, we know A squared plus B squared equals R squared. In this case, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Right, we have this and so that just means that r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared okay and so that's another way to think about it you can think about it in terms of the distance formula or you can think about it in terms of right triangles in the pythagorean theorem whichever way you like both will uh, agree with one another okay so that's the definition and that's a little bit of background on the definition let's see how we can use this uh, in practice. So let's do an example. So let's find the exact value. Find the exact value of the six trig functions. The six trig functions of a positive angle theta positive angle theta if the point 4 comma negative 3 is on theta's terminal side. Okay, So we're going to find the exact value of the six trig functions of a positive angle theta if 4 negative 3 is on theta's terminal side. All right, so let's see what that looks like. In trigonometry, it's always a good idea just to draw a picture. Okay, so you got your x-axis and your y-axis, right? And so we're interested in the point four, negative three. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, it's down here. Okay, so that's the terminal side. 
And it says that theta is a positive angle, which means it starts here and it goes around like this. So this is our theta. Okay. And so, you know, you can leave it like this. It depends on how comfortable you are with this, right? Um, so your a, b is equal to four comma negative three. You can leave it in this form. Um, you're gonna need r though. We're gonna need to know what r is. So r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the square root of four squared plus negative three squared, which is equal to 16 plus nine. So the square root of 25, which is five. So you can think about it like this, right? So here's your r is equal to five, and a is four, and b is negative three, right? So you've got this, all of the pieces that you need to identify the trig functions. So let's do the first three. So the sine of theta we know is equal to b over r, which is negative three over five, so negative three fifths. The cosine of theta is a over r, which is four over five. And the tangent of theta is b over a, which is equal to negative three over four. Right. so here's your answers to the first three. And then of course, the other three is just as simple as flipping those fractions upside down. Find the reciprocal of those fractions and that gets you the other three. Okay. Now notice you could get to the same answer here by thinking of this as a right triangle. Pull that right triangle out. Right Here's your theta, there's your right triangle. B is equal to negative three, R is equal to five, and A is equal to four. All right, and I won't do all of them, I won't do all of them, but you can see that the sine of theta, we know that that's equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite is negative three, hypotenuse is five. Then you get the negative three fifths, right? So it'll, these two agree. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so that's equal to, in the, in the case of this triangle, adjacent is four, hypotenuse is five. And so of course that agrees, right? And the tangent would agree as well. Okay. And so you can kind of think of it in the terms of uh, the coordinate system, or you can think of you can take what you've you see in the coordinate system and pull it out as a triangle, and think about it in terms of uh, you know acute angles and triangles. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so let's uh, do some more examples here. Let's look at, and specifically, let's do some examples through the con in, in the context of uh, uh, thinking about it in the coordinate system. So let's find the value uh, and I'll just say the three main trig functions. Find the value of the three main trig functions when, and we're going to do a multi part here, when theta is equal to zero radians, which is zero degrees. Uh, theta is equal to pi over two radians, which would be 90 degrees. And theta is equal to pi radians, which is 180 degrees. And then I'm going to do one more where theta is equal to three pi over two radians, which is equal to 270 degrees. Okay, so these four, right? Now we're gonna do this in the context of the coordinate system and what we just learned. It's much easier to think about it in this way. These kind of get, get a little goofy. These angles get a little goofy if you think about it in terms of right triangles. All right, so let's, consider part A. So here theta is equal to zero degrees or zero radians. Okay, and so what does that mean? Well, for an angle in standard position, uh, 
a an angle of 30 degrees in standard position basically means that the initial side and the terminal side are both on the x axis okay so this is both the initial side and the terminal side All right they're both you know it's zero degrees right and so the if, if to use the new definition, we need a point on the terminal side. And so let's put a point here and let's let that point be one zero. Okay. And so if our, so this is our AB. So I'll just write AB, right? Just so you can remember in the, from the definition, we had an A and a B and our A is one, our B is zero. What about R? R would be, the radius, uh, well, the hypotenuse of the triangle, but it's better in this case. The triangle doesn't really make sense, right? Because the side, the hypotenuse would lay on the initial side, and so it's best to use the formula here. So r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that's one squared plus zero squared. So it's equal to the square root of one squared, which is the square root of one, which is one. So. In this case, r is equal to 1 as well. Okay. And so let's just go through what the definition spits out. So the sine of theta is equal to b over r, which would be 0 over 1, which is 0. The cosine of theta would be a over r, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. The tangent of theta would be b over a, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. Okay. And so the sine is 0, the cosine is 1, the tangent is 0. Let's look at the other reciprocal functions here. What would the cosecant be equal to? Well, it's the reciprocal of sine, so it's r over b, which would be 1 over 0. Now, this should be sending off uh, red flags and alarms to you. Hopefully you're thinking I can't divide by zero and you're absolutely correct. The cosecant is undefined when theta is equal to zero degrees or zero radians. What about the secant? Secant is r over a and so that would be one over one and so the secant is one. And the cotangent would be instead of b over a it's a over b All right so that would be one over zero and that one is also undefined can't divide by zero I right, can't divide by zero so so it is the case that uh, you do have undefined values for some of the trig functions when uh, when this definition would yield a division by zero. So some of the trig functions are undefined when we consider all possible values of theta, right? This wasn't a problem previously because we were confining ourselves to acute angles and we were also confining ourselves to valid triangles. And so in a valid triangle, you don't have a leg equal to zero and you don't have a hypotenuse equal to zero, right? And so zero values don't make sense in the case of right triangle trigonometry, but they do crop up whenever we're talking about trigonometry uh, in the context of the coordinate system. Okay, so that's part A, right? So that's the case when theta is equal to zero degrees. What about the 90 degree angle? What about when theta is equal to 90 degrees? That'd be part B. So here theta is equal to pi over two, which is also known as 90 degrees. So in this case, right, the angle looks like this and we can pick a convenient a b up here and the one to pick is obviously zero one 
Okay. And again, r would be equal to 1, right? You could do the same calculation. r equals a squared plus b squared. Take the square root of that. And you get the square root of 1 is equal to 1. So again, r is equal to 1. All right, so the sine of theta, uh, sorry, I should be putting the angles in. So the sine of 90 degrees is equal to b over r, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. The cosine of 90 degrees, I bet you can guess, is a over r, so 0 over 1, so 0. And the tangent of 90 degrees is b over a, which is in this case 1 over 0. And so the tangent is undefined when uh, theta is equal to 90 degrees. All right. Right, and so you could see that the secant would be undefined as well because you would be dividing by 0 if I flip this over. These others would be fine. So cotangent would be 0 and and cosecant would be 1. All right, so you get the undefined secant here. Let's look at part C. That's where theta is equal to pi, which is 180 degrees. And it's going to be the same exercise here. All right, so I got my coordinate system. I got my theta going like this. And I've got my AB over here. And in this case, I'm going to put negative 1 comma 0. All right, so negative 1, 0 is the a, B that I'm going to use for this for this angle. Okay, and so I can go through the same exercise here. And again, R is equal to 1, right? You could confirm that. You say A squared plus B squared square root is, uh, here A is negative 1, so negative 1 squared plus 0 squared. And of course, when I square that, I get the square root of 1 plus 0, square root of 1, 1. Right? So you can see it's the same same calculation, basically. Um, and so here my sine of uh, pi, we'll say, is equal to b over r, which is negative 1. Oh, sorry, it's 0 over 1, so 0. So sine is 0 here. The cosine of pi is a over r, and so that's negative 1 over 1. So negative 1 for the cosine. And the tangent of pi is b over a, which is equal to, in this case, 1 over, oh, 0 over 1, 0 over negative 1. OK. So that's, uh, those are the three main functions at 180 degrees. And you can see that the cotangent would be undefined. If we flip this over, I'd be dividing by 0. And also the cosecant is undefined. If I flip this over, I would be dividing by 0. Uh, but the secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, would still be negative 1. And then the last one we'll look at is when theta is equal to 3 pi over 2, which is 270 degrees. And so that one looks like this. Right, and so a great A, B candidate for that would be 0 comma negative 1. Right, so 0 on the x-axis and negative 1 on the y-axis. That's, that's the way to go there. And so again, R is equal to 1. And so sine of 270 degrees would be B over R, which is uh, negative 1 over 1 equals negative 1. The cosine of 270 degrees is a over r, which is 0 over 1, so 0. And the tangent of 270 degrees is b over a, <clears throat> which is negative 1 over 0, so undefined. OK, and so that is the last angle in this example. Okay, and then again, I won't, I don't have to say it, but you can see that the secant would be undefined as well. If I flip this over, I've got undefined. And the cosecant is negative 1, and the 
tangent, or sorry, the cotangent would be zero. Okay. All right, very good. So that's a good example of how to think about this in the context of the coordinate system. Okay, so let's next look at coterm, another concept that's going to uh, be very helpful in finding the trig values of any angle, and that's going to be the co concept of a coterminal angle. And so let's start with a definition here. Okay, so two angles in standard position, two angles in standard position are said to be coterminal. So they're coterminal if they have the same terminal side. If they have the same terminal side. Okay? And so that's the definition of a coterminal of coterminal angles. Let's see some examples. So 90 degrees, if theta is 90 degrees, and if alpha is 450 degrees, then theta and alpha are coterminal. Why? Well, let's draw these two angles. All right, so the first one is theta is 90 degrees. We know what that looks like. That's real easy. That just looks like this. Okay, so that's the right angle. What about this alpha angle, 450 degrees? Well, 450 degrees is a full revolution. That, that would be 360 degrees, but it's 90 degrees more than that, so it actually lands up here. So this would be alpha equals 450 degrees. Now, what's, what do these two pictures have in common? Well, they both have the same initial side, of course. Standard position says that they'll have the same initial side. So that's not the interesting thing that they have in common. The interesting thing that they have in common is that they both have the same terminal side, right? So the terminal side here is on the positive y-axis. The terminal side here is also on the positive y-axis. So here, both angles have their terminal sides on the positive y-axis. And that's the definition of coterminal. Well, the definition is that, the ter that they have the same terminal side. Right, and so here you can see that both of them have the same terminal side. Both of their terminal sides are on the positive y-axis in this case. Another example would be theta equals 270 degrees and alpha equals negative 90 degrees. All right, what do these look like? Well, theta equals 270 degrees looks like this. Right, and alpha equals negative 90 degrees looks like this, right? And so the terminal sides are, in this case, the negative y-axis. You know, I must emphasize that the fact that the terminal sides lie on an axis has nothing to do with this. What's important is that that two angles have the same terminal side. Okay. And so that's what we mean by coterminal angles. And now what is, what's the value uh, in this for the trig functions? Well, the value comes from this theorem. The theorem says if alpha and theta are coterminal, then they have the same value trig functions. Okay, so if alpha and theta are coterminal, then they have the same values for their trig functions. 
And so if that's the case, then sometimes I can take a complicated angle like alpha equals 450 degrees and I can just say, oh, I can easily see that alpha equals 450 degrees is coterminal with 90 degrees. 450 degrees and 90 degrees are coterminal. So sine of 450 degrees is going to be the same as sine of 90 degrees. That's how you can use this, right? So you can take convoluted angles that you don't know anything about and find something coterminal with it that you do know something about. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples where we use this. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. This is extremely useful. It'll come up all the time in the course as we go forward. So let's find the exact value of sine, cosine, and tangent at these angles. Uh, sorry, let's find the exact value of, and I'm going to actually break this differently. Let's not do it this way. Find the exact value of sine of 390 degrees, cosine of 420 degrees, and cosecant of negative 270 degrees. And let's put one more on there. Uh, how about cosine of negative pi over 6. All right, so we should be using radians more since we've introduced that and I need to do that. But Okay, so uh, all of these are goofy angles, right? None of these angles are angles that we're used to, um, so we'll have to be a little bit careful. Now, one of the things we can use here, and I've introduced this before, is the unit circle, uh, kind of the reference sheet, right? And we've used the unit circle reference sheet uh, in the context of the first quadrant just the acute angles that we're used to, but now we can think about it in terms of other angles. Okay, so we'll be using that as we go forward here. And so let's start with part A. We're interested in the sine of 390 degrees. Well, uh, let's draw, I always like to just draw these. We know kind of what this looks like. So 390 degrees would start here, it'd go all the way around 360, and then 30 more. Okay, so that's an angle like that. So that's 390 degrees. Well, it's easy to see that that's going to be 30 degrees above the x-axis. And so a coterminal angle would just be the simple 30 degrees, wouldn't it? All right. And so sine of 390 degrees is going to be equal to sine of 30 degrees. All right. And we can just look that one up. 30 degrees is right here, and so the sine of 30 degrees, remember this is cosine and sine, so the sine is 1 half. Okay, so that's that one. What about number part B? So here we're looking for cosine of 420 degrees, and so again, let's draw it. All right, so we're going to start here. We're going to go around all the way once, and how much more do we need? Well, you can kind of do a side calculation here. So take 420 degrees and subtract off 360 degrees, and that'll tell you how much more you need. So if you do that, you'll see that it's 60 more. All right, so this is going to again come up a little further this time. And so this will be 420 degrees. And so that means our coterminal angle would be, instead of using 420 degrees, let's just use 60 degrees. Right? Those would be coterminal. 420 and 60 would be coterminal. Okay, and so that means the cosine of 420 degrees is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. And so we can look up 60 degrees here, the cosine. So here's 60 degrees. The cosine is 1 half again. Okay. All right, and so that's that one. All right, what about number, or part C? Part C is, here we're interested in the cosecant of negative 270 degrees, okay? 
And so what do we what can we say about that one? Well, let's again draw the picture. So negative means we're going to go clockwise, right? And so negative 270 degrees looks like this. And that, you know, we know that that terminal side there is just the terminal side of a regular 90 degree angle, isn't it? Right? Terminal side, terminal side. Right, so that means that the cosecant of negative 270 degrees must be equal to the cosecant of 90 degrees. And we can look that one up, and you'll see that it's equal to 1. All right, you can look here at 90 degrees. And so we don't have secant and cosecant on this sheet, but we do know that the sine is 1 and the cosecant is the reciprocal of 1, so it just would get be 1. All right, and then finally, the last one, the last example in this exercise would be the cosine of negative pi over 6. And so here, pi over 6 would be like this. Negative pi over 6 would be like this. Okay. And so the coterminal angle of interest here would come around and be like, it would look like this, right? So we don't really talk about, well, not yet anyways. We haven't yet discussed what, what we mean by the, the sine or the cosine of a negative angle. So the best thing we can do is to instead say, okay, let's convert that negative angle into a positive angle. And so the cosine of negative pi over 6 is equal to the cosine of, now what is this angle? Well, you can use the unit circle cheat sheet to kind of help with that. So pi over 6 would be like from here up to this green line. And so negative pi over 6 would be from the positive x-axis down to this green line. And so the positive angle would be 11 pi over 6. Okay. And we can see that the cosine of 11 pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and so that's our angle, and that's our, that's our value. All right, very good. And so you can see how we can use coterminal angles to, um, to, to identify the value of trig functions by basically converting a goofy, difficult angle to something simple, something that's on the unit circle, something we can reference. All right. Okay. And so the other strategy, the other remaining strategy to talk about uh, is similar to the strategy that we employed with the coterminal angle, but it's a strategy that involves something called a reference angle. And so let's define what we mean by a reference angle. So we're going to let theta denote an angle. And we're going to let it denote an angle that lies in some quadrant. Okay, and so what does that mean? Well, it just means some angle in the plane. Right. Then the acute angle, so important, acute angle formed, uh, actually I should say, let me, let me uh, hold on one second, the positive, just to make sure we're clear on that, acute angle, Right, so acute angles are generally taken to be positive, but I just want to make sure that it, you understand that that is positive. The positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta the terminal side of theta and the x-axis is called the reference angle for theta. Okay, all right, so let's break this down. So theta, let theta denote the angle that lies in a quadrant. The positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis is called the reference angle for theta. All right, 
let's see an example. What am I talking about here? All right, so a simple example would be like this. So here's, again, your x-axis, y-axis. Let's say our terminal side is over here, and this is theta. Okay. Then what it says is that it's the positive, the, the reference angle is the positive acute angle. Well, theta is a positive angle, but it is not an acute angle, right? It is too big. Acute angles are between 0 and 90 degrees. This one is like 150 degrees or something. 110 degrees. It's larger than 90 degrees. Too big. So it's not an acute angle. So it's the reference angle is the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta, that's this line, and the x-axis, right? And so if I drop a perpendicular onto the x-axis, then the reference angle is the angle that is inside the triangle. Okay, This would be the reference angle, right? And I'm going to denote the reference angle by theta prime, so like with a little apostrophe on top there. So here theta prime is the reference angle for theta. Right, it meets the definition, doesn't it? It's a positive acute angle, right? So positive acute angle, and it's formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis, right? So it's the it's the angle between those two rays. So this would be the reference angle. Another example. Let's say my angle theta looks like this. Right? Then what's the reference angle? Well, just drop a perpendicular onto the x-axis and that will show you exactly where your reference angle is. So in this case, this, this angle here is my reference angle theta prime. Now, you think of it as a positive angle, right? In this case, you would think of it as a positive angle. Okay, another example. The most interesting, the, the easiest way to see this is just to do these kinds of examples. So let's say I've got an angle that sweeps out like this. So this, this guy here is my theta. Then my x, my, my, or my reference angle, would be formed by dropping a perpendicular onto the x-axis, and it would be this one here, wouldn't it? Okay. Okay, what about like something like this? What if this is my theta? What if that's my theta? What's my theta prime? Well, in this case, theta and theta prime really are the same thing. Right, but technically theta is a negative angle, so you would say that theta prime would be the positive version of it, right? But it's the same numeric value. Right, another example kind of like that would be if my angle looked like this. If this is my theta, then theta is, in this case, precisely equal to theta prime. Right, so I would actually put that theta prime is equal to the absolute value of theta here. Right, so you have to make it positive. Whatever theta is in this case over here, then theta prime would be the positive version of it. And in this case, this would be like theta is theta prime. Right, we could keep going forever and find lots and lots of examples. But the point here is that it's a way of taking an angle and con a reference angle is basically the acute angle version of whatever the angle happens to be. Okay. Okay, let's do some concrete examples here. So these are kind of like pictures that show you how to think about where the reference angle is in relation to the original angle. All right, but let's do some concrete examples with some actual numbers. Okay, so let's find the reference angle. find the reference angle for A, uh, we'll say it's 150 degrees, and then B will be negative 45 degrees, and then C will be negative 5 pi over 6. Okay, so for A, again, let's 
I, I highly recommend just drawing a picture of these things so you can if you draw the picture you can almost instantly see what you need to be doing here so 150 degrees is somewhere over here so so this would be like our theta 150 degrees well we saw an example like this we know that the reference angle is going to be this part that's our theta prime right so how do we figure out what theta prime is equal to well we know if we start over here and we go all the way to here, that's 180 degrees. And we know that this distance is 150 degrees. So the remaining distance can be found by subtracting 150 from 180. So theta prime in this case would be 180 degrees minus 150 degrees. And so that's going to be 30 degrees. Right. Now, unfortunately, there's no like hard and fast uh, formula that I can give you to determine theta prime from theta. You ha it depends on the context. Right. But usually it's something uh, relatively straightforward, and usually the picture will tell you how to calculate it. So in this case, you would just reason that the whole, the whole distance or, you know, from here all the way to here is 180. And I know this piece is 150, so this part that I'm interested in, this theta prime, must be the difference. It must be 180 minus 150. Okay, what about B? So for B, where where the angle is that's given is negative 45 degrees, and so it's down here somewhere. Yeah, about there. All right, and so this was the case where we said, look, we're already kind of we've already kind of found the, the uh, reference angle. So if we were to drop a perpendicular down here, we'd see that the reference angle is really what we already find, what we've already got here. It's, 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 uh, it's kind of on the picture already. But the problem is that theta in this con is, is the theta that's given is negative, right? And our reference angle has to be positive, right? So theta prime is equal to 45 degrees, positive now. Okay, and then the last example is where, uh, again, we have a negative angle, uh, and the angle that's given is negative 5 pi over 6. And so we know that if we're going negative, we're going to be going counter, or we're going to go clockwise here. And this, this distance is pi over 6, and so 5 pi over 6 would be just short of that, so something like this. Right, and so this whole distance is 6 pi over 6, and so this distance is 5 pi over 6. Right, and so what's left here would be similar kind of reasoning here. This would be your reference angle, right? You can think of, again, dropping a perpendicular. The triangle tells you where the angle needs to be. And so the reference angle here would be, uh, you can think of it as 6 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6, and so here theta prime is equal to uh, pi minus uh, 5 pi over 6. And so that would be pi over 6. OK. So that is an example using real numbers. And again, unfortunately, there's no formula I can tell you uh, regarding how to find these things. You just have to kind of uh, draw the picture and then do some reasoning about what what the angle angles measure must be and uh, just keep in mind that the reference angle is always positive right so don't let the signs trip you up just draw the picture look at it and say okay this would if I continue this angle technically that would be negative pi over 6 that I'm moving but it's reference angle so it's pi over 6 positive so I think reference angles are a slightly more challenging concept than coterminal angles. Uh, coterminal angles, you're always just basically subtracting off 360 degrees. Uh, but here, you have to think a little more, draw the picture, and be a little more, uh, a little more, a little more cautious about how you calculate them. 
But uh, the value here uh, is in the following theorem. The value to trigonometry is in the following theorem. Okay, so if theta is any angle and theta prime is the reference angle for theta, then the sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the sine of theta prime. And the cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the cosine of theta prime. And the tangent of theta is plus or minus the tangent of theta prime. Right, and etc. for the others as well. Right, so the, the takeaway here is that whatever the whatever the sine of theta is, you can find it using the reference angle and then just reasoning about whether it must be positive or negative. Okay, so sine of theta is equal to either sine of theta prime or possibly negative sine of theta prime. Okay, and so let's do an example to see how this works. Let's do an example, and this example will take a minute. Um, we're interested in the sine of 135 degrees. Okay, and we're going to use reference angles. Now you could look at a uh, unit circle and probably find 135 degrees. Right, indeed, it's here. All right, but we're going to use the reference angle uh, approach. So draw the picture. Okay, and so we know that 135 degrees is somewhere over here. And the reference angle would be this angle here. And we can figure out what that angle is uh, by saying theta prime must be equal to 180 degrees minus 135 degrees. And when you do that, you'll see it's 45 degrees. And so what that means then, is, according to the previous theorem, is that the sine, because remember the previous theorem said the sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the sine of theta prime. And so theta is 135, so sine of 135 degrees must be equal to plus or minus the sine of theta prime, which is 45 degrees. Okay, because 45 degrees is the reference angle for 135 degrees. And that we can look up the sine of 45 degrees in our table. And so we've got this here, so it's the square root of two over two. And so that means we're equal to plus or minus the square root of two over two. Now, the question of which sign do we use, plus or minus, uh, is sort of a side discussion. So how do we know which sine and not sine cosine, not as in sine cosine, but sine as in plus or minus, how do we know which sine to use? Right, is it positive or is it negative? How do we know? Well, uh, the way we know is um, we have to use, we have to reason about it. Right, and so let's uh, let's think about this. All right, you won't have to do this for every problem because I'm I'm explaining the concept now. But uh, here's how you would do it. Here's how you would want to reason about this. Right, so in this case, uh, my terminal side is over here, and I've got my a b up here. Right, right, and so my angle goes like this. Here's my theta. Right, so this is just a mirror of what the sine of 135 example was. Okay, so how do we know which sign to use? Well, we know that we can think about this in, in terms of a triangle, and this would be the side A, and this would be the side B. Right, now we've got quadrants here, so this is the x-axis and the y-axis, and so this is what we call quadrant one. This over here is what we call quadrant two. Down here is quadrant three, and then we've got quadrant four. Right Now, in quadrant two, where all the action is for this sine of 135 degrees example, B is a positive value, right? So this one is positive, 
and a is negative. Right, how do I know a is negative? Well, again, this is the x-axis. Right, so here's the origin. This is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to infinity positive. And if this is the origin, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, all the way to negative infinity, right? And so a is extended into this, into the negative side of the x-axis, right? And so that means a is negative, right? B is above the x-axis, and so that means we're on the positive side of the y-axis, right? And so over here, uh, a is negative in this term, in this quadrant, a is always negative, and b is always positive, right? So let's see in, the, in this specific example in quadrant two. A is negative, B is positive, and R is always positive, right? That's always, right? So remember, R is equal to A squared plus B squared square root. So A squared is always positive, B squared is always positive, right? When you add two positives together, you get a positive. When you take the square root of a positive, you get a positive. So R is always positive, right? And so this is how we can figure out what whether to go with the positive or the negative here, right? So let's think about this. So I'm talking about the sine over here. So sine of 135 degrees, right? And we know that the sine is equal to B over R, right? And so that's going to be B is positive. R is positive, right? So the sign has to be positive in this quadrant, right? So the sign is positive, and that means that, you know, going back to the previous example, we had a sign of 135 degrees was equal to plus or minus the sign of 45 degrees. Again, that's the reference angle. And we said that that's equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. And now we know because we're talking about the sine function and we know that 135 degrees is in quadrant 2, B is positive, A is negative, R is positive. So I've got a positive over a positive, B over R. And so this must be the positive version. That's the one that I want to keep. The negative square root of 2 over 2 is, is not, it doesn't work in this quadrant. In a different quadrant, uh, the sign is negative, but in this quadrant, it's positive. Okay, so that's how you can think about it. Now, this is the long way around, right? We're gonna, I'm gonna show you something in a second that'll make it much easier for you to check these things. But all you really have to do is think about, okay, this is a negative, that's a positive, and that's a positive. So positive over positive, positive over positive, B over R, this is our R, remember, B over R, will yield a positive value. Positive over positive is a positive. Now, how can we think about this positive negative business in a little more, uh, in a little like more uh, economic sort of efficient way? Well, we can kind of break it down like this, All right? Let's draw the quadrants again here. So here's quadrant one, and then there's quadrant two, and then I've got my third quadrant over here and my fourth quadrant over here. Now over here, what is AB? Well, positive, positive. All right, so everything's positive in quadrant one. That's the, 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 the right triangle trigonometry case. So if you go back and you look at those right triangle trigonometry, everything is always positive. All right now when we move over to two, A and B are you know, so here A is the X coordinate, it's negative now, and B is still the Y coordinate, so it's positive. All right, so in quadrant two, some of them could be negative and some of them could be positive. All right, in quadrant one, everything's always positive. In quadrant two, some are positive, some are negative. In quadrant three, here I've got A and B, they're both negative, aren't they? So A and B are negative, but remember R is always positive and sometimes it's A over R and B over R. So here they can be both as well. So 
uh, let me put that on here, all positive. Some positive, and then here also some positive. Right, and then the same thing here, right? In quadrant four, now my A is positive, that's this axis, positive axis, but my B is negative, right? So I've got a plus and a minus. Right, so here again, some are positive, some are negative. Well, if you spend the time to uh, try to figure this out, if you just go through all of the all of the scenarios, there aren't actually that many. If you just look at, you know, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent in each of the quadrants. So that's six per quadrant, so it'd be 12, 6, 12, 18, 24. There's 24 possibilities. And what you can find out is that it can all be summarized as follows. So the sine and the cosecant are positive in quadrants 1 and 2 and negative in quadrants 3 and 4. The cosine and the secant are positive in quadrants one and four and negative in quadrants two and three. And what do you think the tangent and the cotangent are gonna do? Pause the video and, and take a guess. Well, positive, positive, and negative, negative. Right, so you've got sine and cosecant, uh, positive, positive, negative, negative, cosine, secant, negative, positive, negative, positive, and tangent, cotangent, negative, positive, positive, negative. Right, so you can just have a reference here of this right here, and that will tell you how to which one to choose. So if I'm doing a refer if I have a reference angle problem that I'm working on, this will tell me which sign to choose, either positive or negative. Okay, excellent. Let's see another example. We'll make use of this. So let's look at, let's try to figure out the cosine of 600 degrees. So what does that look like? Again, draw the picture. Always start with the picture. So 360 degrees. Now how much further do I have to go? Well, you can kind of just do a little math here, take your 600 degrees, subtract off 360 degrees, and what you'll get is 240 degrees. So I have to go all the way around to like here approximately. All right, so this would be theta equals 600 degrees. Right, and so I could, I could reduce this down uh, so if you think about dropping a, a little uh, perpendicular here, this is the reference angle, isn't it? It's just that little piece there. So how big is that angle? How big is that angle? How big is this theta prime? Well, we knew that we had we started, you know, we start here, we go around 360, and then we just saw another 240. Right, so from here to here is 240, and I know that from here to here is 180. So theta prime must be equal to 240 degrees minus 180, right? I've got 240 to here and then 180 to here. Right, and if you do that subtraction, you'll see that it's 60 degrees, okay? And so remember the theorem the cosine of theta equals plus or minus the cosine of theta prime, right? So the cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the cosine of its reference angle. So that means that the cosine of 600 degrees is equal to plus or minus the cosine of 60 degrees, right? And we can look up 60 degrees on the cheat sheet 60 degrees is right here, the cosine is 1 half. Okay, so it's equal to plus or minus 1 half. Now is it plus or is it minus? 
All right? Is it plus or is it minus? Well, the angle 600 degrees lands us in which quadrant? So here's one, two, we're in quadrant three. Okay, and we're talking cosine in quadrant three. So I just look up here. Uh, here's cosine, one, two, three. The cosine's negative in quadrant three, right? So that means this is equal to negative one half, right? Cosine is positive in other quadrants, but in quadrant three, it's negative. Okay, and so that's how we can use the reference angle uh, to figure this guy out. Very good. Let's do one more example like this, just because I think this can be a tricky concept for people sometimes. So let's take another, one more example. And so here we're interested in the tangent of negative pi over 3. Okay, so let's draw the angle. Always draw the angle. So negative pi over 3 is going to be somewhere down here, approximately there. Okay. And so what is the reference angle? Well, it's its own reference angle, just make it positive, right? So theta prime is just equal to positive pi over three, right? We can just draw, drop the perpendicular, you see where the triangle is, and the interior angle here is just this double that I've drawn there, and so that's just pi over three, right? And so it's gotta be positive, it's gotta be acute, and that's what you get. And so that means that, remember, tangent of theta is equal to plus or minus tangent of theta prime. And so that means the tangent of negative pi over 3 is equal to plus or minus the tangent of pi over 3. Now, which one is it? Well, first of all, what's the tangent of pi over 3? So we can reference that. Pi over 3 is up here. The tangent in this version is given as square root of 3. So our, our answer is plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, which one is it? Well, uh, we're in which quadrant? So 1, 2, 3, we're in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, what is the tangent? So here's the tangent, 1, 2, 3, 4. The tangent's negative in quadrant 4. So the answer must be negative square root of three. Okay, so that's that's how we can how we can kind of go through and use the reference angle. <clears throat> right. So so to use a reference angle, first you have to identify the reference angle, then you identify the value of the trig function at the reference angle, and then you have to figure out is it positive or negative. Right. So three steppers. So one identify the reference angle to identify the value of the trig function at the reference angle and then three figure out the sign based on which quadrant you are in. Okay, so that's kind of the three-stepper. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so uh, I do want to do one more problem, the uh, sort of a challenge, more challenging problem. Um, but let's see if we can knock this one out relatively quick. I want to show you how to do these kinds of things. So, give, so here's, here's the statement. So given that the cosine of theta is equal to negative two-thirds and uh, theta is between pi over 2 and pi, we want to find the value of sine of theta and tangent of theta. Okay, so here's the statement. So we're, we're given the value of cosine of theta, <clears throat> and we're given some details regarding where theta lies in the units, in, uh, in the circle, right? What, what the angle theta looks like. How, well, we're given, we're given bounds on the measure of theta. 
Okay, so the way I would do is I would first start by drawing the picture. Okay, so we're told that theta is between pi over 2 and pi. That means it's over here somewhere. Now, how I draw this isn't important. Just I, I just need to know where it lives. Okay, I need to know where theta lives. Okay, and we can we can draw a so given that it looks like this, I can see that there's a reference angle here. Okay, and so. In, what this basically means is that anytime I'm looking at the trig functions for theta, then the trig functions for this other angle, I'm going to put an alpha in here. The trig functions for this alpha are going to be the same as the trig functions for theta plus or minus. Okay, and so let's draw a little triangle here. Okay, and so the, the implication with this drawing is that I've got this triangle, and I'm going to try to draw it in the same orientation as it is. Uh, in the picture. So here's my A, here's my B, and here's my R. Right, so this is 100 and, or, or whatever, this is some angle between pi over 2 and pi, between 90 and 180 degrees. My triangle is in this quadrant. A is negative, B is positive, R is always positive. And I know that whatever the trig values are for alpha, uh, they're going to be the same as they would be for theta. Okay, now I also know that the cosine of theta is equal to a over r, which we're told is negative 2 over 3. So a is, you know, is the adjacent side, r is the um, hypotenuse here. And so this triangle, I can actually put values on this triangle, can't I? So I could write it out like this, negative 2 and 3. Right now, when I put a negative value on a triangle like this, I no longer have to worry about which quadrant I'm in. Right? As soon as I put that negative on there, I'm capturing the negativeness of theta or the positiveness of theta. Right? So I've got everything I need here. Right? So we know that a is negative, r is a is negative 2, r is 3. What about b? Can we figure out what b is? Well, it's just a right triangle, right? So I can use Pythagorean theorem on this. So I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and so that means I'm looking for this b leg. So b squared equals uh, c squared minus a squared. And further... Uh, that means b is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared, like so. And so um, I can just plug those values in. So here c is the hypotenuse 3, and so that is uh, 3 squared, and a is the negative 2. Right, And so I get 9 minus 4. So the square root of 5. So b is equal to the square root of 5. So now I have the triangle. So I've got square root of 5, I've got 3, and I've got negative 2. And here's my, here's my angle alpha. And so at this point, I can, just, I can just read them off, can't I? The sine of alpha is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so square root of 5 over 3. And the tangent, that's the other one we need, is the tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? So square root of 5 over negative 2. Okay. And so here is what I'm seeking. That's the answer. So if the cosine is negative 2 thirds and the angle is in the quadrant as, as defined here, then the sine is square root of 5 over 3, and the tangent is square root of 5 over negative 2. So that's all you need to do. All right, so this one required a little bit of reasoning. You start with the picture of the information that's given. You can deduce a triangle from that. Right, You can deduce the values of the sides of the triangle from the given value of cosine. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side, b in this case. And then once you have the triangle, 
And the triangle is sine accurate for the quadrant, meaning this is negative, right? So you've got the negative 2. This is positive, so positive square root of 5. And then r is always positive, so 3. Once you have that, it's just a matter of, of right triangle trigonometry. Just read it off, and, uh, and that's the answer. OK, so that was a little bit of a longer lecture than what uh, I had anticipated. So I'll end it here. And uh, that is going to get us a long ways into being able to find uh, trig values for any given angle. Right? And we'll see a few more examples of uh, how to think about trigonometri trigonometric functions and how to derive the values. Uh, but this is the big one. This was kind of the big one. It works for any angle. All right, so we'll end it there, and we'll see you all in the next lecture. Take care.